Permission to feel, unlocking the power of emotions to help our kids, ourselves, and our society thrive, is a book by Mark Brackett, a professor at Yale University's Child Study Center, where he also serves as the founding director of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. His book emphasizes the importance of understanding emotions and developing emotional intelligence, not only for personal well-being, but for the health of our communities and society at large. Brackett begins by sharing personal stories and experiences that illuminate the significance of emotions in our lives. He argues that our emotions affect everything from our relationships to our health, our creativity, our decision-making, and our performance at work or school. Despite their importance, emotions are often undervalued or mismanaged, leading to a range of problems in society. To address this, Brackett introduces the concept of emotional intelligence, EI, which involves recognizing, understanding, labeling, expressing, and regulating emotions constructively. He asserts that EI should not be seen as a soft skill, but as a critical component of human functioning. Improved emotional intelligence can lead to better outcomes in education, mental health, and even the workplace. The author introduces a framework called RULER, which stands for recognizing, understanding, labeling, expressing, and regulating emotions. This is a practical tool to foster emotional intelligence in children and adults alike. No one, recognizing emotions. The first step in RULER involves becoming aware of both our own emotions and those of others. Brackett stresses that accurate recognition relies on paying attention to physiological signals, thoughts, and behaviors that accompany emotions. 2. Understanding Emotions This step delves into the causes and consequences of emotions. Brackett makes it clear that emotions do not occur in a vacuum. They are influenced by personal history, context, power dynamics, and even the weather. 3. Labeling Emotions Brackett emphasizes the importance of having a rich emotional vocabulary, as labeling emotions with precision can influence how we understand and respond to them. People often use general terms like good or bad to describe feelings, but being more specific, e.g., anxious versus overwhelmed, can lead to better emotional management. 4. Expressing Emotions There is art and etiquette to expressing emotions effectively. Brackett highlights that expression of emotions is governed by unwritten social norms and rules that vary based on culture, gender, age, and situation. Expressing emotions in appropriate ways is key to fostering trust and understanding in relationships. Regulating emotions. Lastly, regulation is about dealing with emotions in adaptive ways. This doesn't mean suppressing feelings, but rather responding to emotions in ways that serve our well-being and goals. Brackett describes a range of strategies for regulating emotions, such as cognitive reappraisal or deep breathing, noting that not all strategies work equally well for everyone. Brackett argues that promoting emotional intelligence through the ruler method has several benefits. In schools, it fosters healthier interactions between teachers and students, helps prevent bullying, and creates an environment conducive to learning. In the workplace, EI can reduce stress and turnover, while increasing engagement and creativity. At an individual level, EI can lead to greater well-being and mental health, improved relationships, and overall success in life. For children, Brackett suggests that adults must model emotional intelligence and create environments that encourage the expression and regulation of emotions. Children who learn to manage their feelings effectively are better equipped to handle challenges, form healthy relationships, and perform well academically. In our personal lives, the cultivation of EI can improve communication with partners, parenting practices, and self-care. Brackett emphasizes self-compassion and mindfulness as practices that support emotional regulation and encourage a non-judgmental awareness of our emotional state. Throughout the book, Brackett cites research and case studies supporting his arguments, showcasing how the principles of EI have been successfully implemented in various settings, from classrooms to boardrooms. He also rebuts the criticism that spending time on emotional intelligence could take away from academic or professional pursuits, arguing instead that EI is foundational to success in those very areas. Brackett acknowledges that becoming more emotionally intelligent is not always easy. It requires practice, commitment, and often a shift in mindset. 
However, he is optimistic about the potential for change at all levels of society. By granting ourselves and others permission to feel, Brackett believes we can create a more empathetic, productive, and emotionally healthy world. In conclusion, permission to feel serves as a profound call to action, urging us to place emotions at the forefront of our educational agendas, workplace policies, and individual life choices. Mark Brackett's book delivers a persuasive argument for why emotional intelligence is essential and provides us with the tools to enhance our own EI and foster it in others. By accepting and working with our emotions rather than against them, we stand to benefit individually and collectively, shaping a society where well-being and success are intricately connected to our emotional lives. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.